Hello. We are back and hopefully you can hear us on there. Uh, should we do an audio test? One. Yes. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Okay. Let us know if the audio sounds okay. So we are resuming now for the last lesson of the day with what is called modular code development. So this is sort of an example that puts together a lot of the topics of the workshop. We'll see us using Git and who knows, maybe some testing, but in particular, how we evolve some code from being this small, um, what do you say? How, how we would actually evolve some code from being this small, uh, how do I say this? We have prepared a small uh, script uh, doing some uh, some typical uh, scientific uh, data analysis for mm -hmm. us. Yeah, we let's see. We will start from there and uh, let's see how it uh, will evolve. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay, so it's like the real or a realistic example of it. Um, in the meantime, we have some links here in the notes. There's some questions here in the notes that you can start filling out while we begin our discussion. So please think about that. In the meantime, uh, you do you have the lesson open or should I open it? Uh, I can share my screen. Okay. Can you see it? That's the questions we put in the notes. Yeah. There we go. Uh, yes. So uh, when we start off, I guess we can discuss these questions ourselves. So you, what does modular code development mean for you? Uh, well, as a person with some medical education background, to me, modular is something that uh, actually exists in the nature. Uh, we humans uh, are modular ourselves. <laughs> I would say, uh, because if you look at uh, our body, uh, there uh, there are multiple uh, systems like a circulatory system, the nervous system, and the respiratory system. Each system actually uh, performs its unique function, and together they form our body. And uh, at the same time, if you look at uh, the microscopic level, uh, one single cell is also composed uh, of uh, various tiny, tiny components. And uh, those components are all performing their own functions. And uh, together, they will form a functional cell. Huh. So it's not just about code. It's huh. in the nature. <laughs> yeah, I never thought of that. So. So I guess there's two types. One is there's, from what you said, there's different systems doing different things and they're separate so they can be understood and, well, yes, I won't say they... developed about humans, but can be <laughs> understood and function yeah. separately. And then there's the hierarchy. And, yes, exactly. Yeah. And, you know, that matches up with what... I think about code also. So, and whenever the systems start interfering with each other, is that when stuff goes bad, and the the really difficult diseases start happening? Yes, I think that's uh, okay. that's true for both uh, human and the code. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, um. Yeah. So what does modular code development mean for you then? Uh, well, I would say that's also a uh, hierarchical concept. Uh, in the lower level, I would uh, split a functional block of code into uh, functions, or I will create uh, uh, classes for them. Uh, if you look at a little bit upper level, then uh, I will organize uh, functions or classes 
that are rel related with each other uh, to a single module. The module could be uh, reused uh, in different uh, projects. Uh, mm -hmm. That's how I understand. Uh, yeah. How about you? Yeah, I mean, I guess it depends on the kind of project, but basically I start off with something and then usually it starts off a bit chaotic, but once I get parts that I think are self-contained, I'll start splitting them off, whether it's functions or other files or classes or something like that. But yeah, basically like picking off little bits that are standalone and other things can use as an interface. Yeah. I guess that has uh, yeah. partially answered uh, uh, a very natural second question, uh, which is why do we want modular code instead of uh, a, a block of code line after line to do our tasks? Uh, so is there any other reasons we want to uh, develop modular code? Hmm. So let's see. Uh, well, the first so. thing comes to my mind is uh, um, if I want to share my code with the other person mm -hmm. or uh, put it uh, to my paper, mm -hmm. I would like uh, it's well organized. Then uh, the other people can use part of it or use the, uh, if I make a whole uh, Python package, then they can import it, uh, they can install it. Uh, I would like uh, uh, code in the package uh, module. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, we, okay. Uh, we have uh, seen some answers. So please uh, uh, fill out the questions uh, with your comments. Yeah. Uh, yeah, maybe we can come back to this later and uh, have yeah. a look at uh, the uh, material first. Good idea. So what's next? Uh, let's check out this. Okay, learning uh, outcomes. The learning outcomes. So should we discuss this now or come back? Um, which uh, of maybe these? we do some, uh, some hands-on stuff and then come back to this when we have a yeah. deeper understanding. Yeah, sounds good. Uh, um, yeah. Yeah, I guess the main thing we might bring up is this first point about pure functions. So basically, we'll see which of our functions have side effects and don't. So basically, if a function is only evaluated by its arguments, then that makes it easy to write and test and understand and we'll maybe get there, but yeah. okay. Uh, yeah. Let me go back to the notes. Uh, yeah, uh, another thing I would like to uh, to emphasize is that uh, in this session, the main idea will be, um, we will do the tapping uh, together. It's kind of a, like a, a, a live tapping uh, demo. Mm -hmm. uh, I will be uh, using the keyboard and uh, Richard will be helping me, giving me guides and uh, uh, also your participate, uh, your, you will participate uh, via the notes, giving us comments, suggestions, uh, or uh, questions in the notes. Uh, so we will do this coding uh, together, but I'm the one using the keyboard. Mm -hmm. Okay, yes, sounds good. So what is our task? Uh, let's have a look. Okay, so this is our task. Uh, we will use some data downloaded uh, uh, from FMI's open database. Uh, it's uh, uh, some records of temperatures in year 2022. Uh, it's, uh, temperature measurements from the observation station in uh, Wanda uh, Airport. Uh, yet yeah, FMI has the observation station there. Um, that's the data we are going to use. And uh, uh, as I mentioned before, we have prepared uh, some 
uh, some script for uh, for our task. Um, so we will uh, use this as a starting point and try to make it more modular. Oh. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, so so what does it do? Uh, should we move to the to a Jupyter notebook first? Uh, yeah, sure. I guess oh. we can look at it as we copy it there. Yeah. Or maybe while you're getting it set up, I can talk about it some. Yes. So it's a simple analysis that reads in data from the CSV file. It computes the average temperature over the specified range and then makes some plots. So it's a fairly typical, well, little analysis. So it starts off um, like it has the read, analyze, write out results sections. So even though it's simple, it provides some good stuff that we can use as a like a, a good example of the whole analysis workflow. So um, while we're doing this, we'll basically be doing it live. So you can, and please do write in the notes and make suggestions on what we should be doing next. So we won't really do stuff until someone suggests it. And we'll just see where it goes. So do you want to see if it runs first? I guess that's the first step, right? Yes, let's try it out. Uh, I have already imported this uh, um, uh, this package, mm -hmm. uh, so I can run directly this one. Oh, uh, we got uh, some uh, uh, fail not found. Oh, I haven't okay. downloaded the data. Right. Uh, okay. It should be in this uh, repo. Yeah, we okay. can see, uh, we can have a glance here. Oh, yeah. uh, we can see that uh, uh, the record uh, is, uh, uh, there's one uh, record for uh, each hour. Mm -hmm. like, uh, from zero, one, two. Yeah. yeah, we will download from here. Okay. okay. So you copy the link. Yeah, I will use uh, a Jupyter magic command. Oh, that's uh, clever. Okay. So basically, I, from the terminal, you're using the wget program, which downloads the file and saves it, I guess. Yes, I think. Uh, yes. OK. It's running. Run. And the exclamation mark there is the shell magic, so it runs something. Yes. And yeah, we see it saved temperatures.csv. Right. Let's run this again. Okay, it works. So I will uh, yeah. delete this. You know, this is a question that's come up some past days. Like, how do you include data along with an analysis? So there could be something that says, if the data doesn't exist, it runs this command to download and saves it. So just an idea. Yeah, especially when you are working uh, with a Jupyter notebook, it's a yeah. <laughs> very convenient. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. And it should works. we go through this uh, uh, line by line? Uh, yes, please. What do the parts mean? Okay. Uh, so uh, the first line uh, is a, a kind of a hard code. Uh, it's number of measurements we want to analysis and uh, visualize. And then uh, by using a pandas, uh, we read some data from a CSV file and then uh, ex extracted the one column. Uh, mm -hmm. and we have done some uh, computation, which is the mean mm -hmm. of these temperatures uh, mm -hmm. uh, and then some plot. So very uh, simple but typical process. Yeah. Um, yeah. So but the... uh, also, the... sorry. <laughs> In the notes, I put a question to the audience, how is this not modular? But there's no answers yet, so maybe I can ask you, how is this not modular? Uh, well, uh, we can see uh, there's a file reading, data uh, extracting, and the calculation, and the visualization, all stuff together. Mm -hmm. uh, if next time I want to use just a plot, 
uh, what, what should I do? I copy and paste. Mm -hmm. That doesn't sound like a good idea. So I would like some single functional uh, unit of code that I can reuse. I don't need to copy paste, yeah. just call that function. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I guess that's right. So one of the first tasks suggested in the workshop is to create plots for 25, 15, 500 measurements. So if you want it to be very unmodular, you'd copy and paste the code block three times and then rerun it. And that makes a lot of code duplication. So, yeah, you can just copy the cells. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So if we want to be slightly better than that, how would we make three different plots? Uh, I will use a for loop mm -hmm. that uh, I don't need to uh, repeat all this stuff. So three times. Uh, should we try that? Mm -hmm. Yes, let's do it. OK, I will say for number of measurements. Uh, in the list. So 25, mm -hmm. 100, and uh, oh, 500. 500, yeah. Yes. And. Uh, okay. Okay, let me run it. Okay. Yeah, okay. It I see. Uh, works. It's better than three cells. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, but since it's not modular, we forgot to change the file name it was saving to. So oh, yes. Mm, this is always a risk. So mm. should we fix that first? Uh, maybe we can, well, we can either define uh, unique names for them, mm -hmm. or we can uh, use some other variable to generate the file name automatically. Sure. Uh, okay. Maybe we can use uh, like the number of measurements. Mm. That's exactly what is being used here, 25. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, OK, let's okay. do that. OK, yes, yeah, so. Uh, let's save the PNG file. Uh, uh, use string formatting and the variable make defining out file. And this is also good because in the future when we need to, if we make it more modular, we have the variable already defined. So it's good. Yes. OK. So what should we do next? I'm waiting for chat messages. Let's see. Let's see if anyone suggests something. Is there anything we should extract out and pull from here? Well, I don't like the visualization and the calculations together. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So would you like to pull one of them out? Yeah, at least I would like to pull the, uh, the plot part okay. out. Yeah, makes sense. And it really yeah. makes sense that once we have all the plot working well, so we define all the access labels and format and stuff like that, we'd want to be able to use the same plot format in multiple cases. So yes, yeah. OK, uh, someone okay. says we need an underscore and out file. Oh, yes. Thank you yes. so much. Uh, so I will uh, move this. Out. Yes, OK. See, so. I will define a function for this. Uh, it mm -hmm. will be plot and temperatures. So do we need some input? Yeah, so what uh, should the inputs be? Um, well, alt file should be here, I mm -hmm. guess. Mm -hmm. And 
Should the temperatures be an input? Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah. And the mean, I guess. Oh, right. Yeah. Should, Should we the... give alt file uh, some default value? Oh, yeah. Why not? So default to none, mm -hmm. then we can use uh, um, number of measurements as uh, the output file name. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, or a different idea. Uh, hmm. Yeah, what should, or could it just be something like plot.png, so not take any stand and mm. it basically always, like, it minimally works, but always needs to be something. Or maybe yeah. we should just call it good enough and accept you need an output, otherwise it doesn't make sense. Mm. So we will or use uh... the out file. What if the default was none? Mm -hmm. And then the save fig only ran if um Oh yes. If it's if there's a given out file. Yes, yes. If out file yeah. Then we save. So now the function is usable both for interactive kind of work, mm -hmm. and then if you want to save stuff later. Although there yes. are still some problems with that, but we can get there later. Yes. OK. And now we need to put this back into num measurements. Yes. We will. Oh, just this. Okay, yeah, and mean. Ah, uh, but it should specify the out file. Uh, yeah, if yeah, we want, okay. then. Oh, yeah. yeah, but we could also not give it right now. Mm. Mm. Yeah, that's Yeah, it. we could uh, comment this out. Yeah. Then, yeah. Okay. Uh, should we try without uh, saving first? Mm, yeah, let's try. Then we don't need to specify this. Okay. It won't be saved. Mm -hmm. uh, should I run it again? Yeah, let's go. Okay. Oh, okay. It's still and working. It works. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, what's next? Um. Should we? extract more functions out. So something, one of the files says, um, or one of the suggestions is to remove the compute statistics and reading data functions out to set, yeah. remove these to separate functions. Yeah, that sounds quite, uh reasonable to me. Yeah. Okay. So this part will go to another function, which will be, let me name it, get, uh, get data maybe. Mm -hmm. So should we uh, make the uh, input file, uh, uh, we can, we can uh, flexibly uh, Use different input file. Ah, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So the function shouldn't should be able to work on different inputs. Yep. Okay. Yeah. See, then this will be a uh, input file. Yeah. Uh, number of measurements, maybe the uh, second uh, argument. Okay. Yeah. I guess that has to be specified from outside. Yes. So what if we didn't have it as an argument? So I think the code would still work because of how Python goes, but is that good? Uh, you mean, well, if we, if we 
don't specify this number of rows, I think I will read all the rows. Yeah. Uh, but if we leave this like this, uh, leave it like this, then we mm -hmm. probably will get an error. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. That's good. So we've got that. And so I'll put it back. It runs successfully. Is that the file name? Uh, I think so, yes. Okay. Uh, is it still working? Okay. Yeah, <laughs> Good. okay. Good. Now we have two functions. Uh, is there too much data being plotted? Did it read the whole thing? If you scroll down. Oh, yes. Uh, what the... The measurements. Uh, the me sounds weird. I, what I would do usually is to restart the kernel mm. because there might be some variable names polluted. Good point, yeah. Uh, okay, so there are some pictures. typo, I think. Ah, uh, um, okay. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, okay, so we need to store the output of the get data function. Yeah, we need to return. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. Okay, now it uh, looks okay. Yeah, okay, this looks like it looked. Okay, and then should we extract out the statistics function? Yeah, I would love to do that in case I want to do something uh, different. Mm -hmm. So that means we will have a third function. I'll call it uh, get uh, mean. Ah, someone points out that in file isn't specified. Uh, uh, why do you specify? Oh, no, it is specified. Yeah, in, in git data. Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think it is specified yeah. here. I mean, yeah. it works, so it had to be there. Mm when the question came up, though I got confused, so I wondered, <laughs> how is this working? Yeah, uh, so the input will be temperatures, uh, but do we want to use this number of measurements or we can uh, uh, get it uh, from the input temperatures? Yeah. It should probably come from the input temperatures. So yeah, we could pass it as an argument, but then we have to basically pass redundant information because yeah, and the column there's also... knows how many rows are there, right? Yeah, and there might be some risk that uh, we input a wrong yeah. number. <laughs> mm -hmm. So this might be better, I think. Yeah. Okay, let me rerun this. Okay, still working. Yeah, uh, okay, good. So let's talk about which of these are pure functions or not. So is there any parameters other than the arguments? And does it have any side effects? So plot temperatures, it's based only on the input arguments, but it does have side effects, but only saving files. So is this function easy to test? Um, I think uh, yes, at least for getmin, we can easily uh, test it by using pet test. Uh, oh, getmin, I was talking about plot temperatures. But let's yeah. start with getmin, that's the easier one. So mm -hmm. for getmin, 
this is the easiest thing to test because there's no side effects. The only input is the, the only thing that affects the output is the input. Should we make a test now for it or well, later? I would like to, well, I usually test, uh, I, I usually do unit tests in a Python script mm -hmm. uh, other than a Jupyter yeah. notebook. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Like if we did the test, then how would we know if it even worked? Yeah. Okay, so let's not test it yet. But git mean is easy to test. Is the function git data easy to test? Uh, get data, I think uh, there are several things we can test. Uh, for example, uh, we can test uh, the, the size of data. Is it uh, matching with the number of measurements? Something like mm. that. Mm. Uh, can you say that again? I was reading the. Uh, I mean, stats. Uh, because the input is number of measurements, and the we uh, pass that to the read CSV uh, method. We want mm. to verify that uh, the uh... extracted data has the uh, uh, exact uh, the same uh, right. number of uh, records we want. Yeah, that okay. could be something we can test. That's a good idea. So start with like, um, yeah, so include some sample data like this one. Mm. And then we can, well, there's not that much that can go wrong, but test that. Okay, yeah. Mm. Um, yeah, usually for computation uh, functions, I would do some test, like get yeah. mean. Yeah, okay. Um, there's a question, maybe it's better to put the git mean function call inside the plot temperatures function. So should we compute the mean outside or inside the plotting function? Uh, well, usually I would make them uh, stand alone mm -hmm. <laughs> in, uh, instead of, uh, yeah. yeah, it depends. Yeah, like, like, would we want the plot temperatures to only plot means, or maybe it could plot other statistics too? Like it's uh, yes. right now basically a general function that plots the temperatures and a line, and the line can be different things. Yeah, let's imagine that uh, we define a, a fourth function that uh, will get uh, like uh, yeah. not uh, uh, arithmetic mean, but uh, yeah. geometric mean, then yeah. we can plot a different thing. Yeah. yeah. There's also a good suggestion, why not use statistics.mean instead of creating a custom function? And yeah, I guess that would make sense, but this is a demo and this is an example of something that would be more complex. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we, we want to go to a very, okay. uh, very complex Python stuff. We uh, want to make it uh, more hmm. general. Yeah. yeah. Someone suggests testing if the column for air temperatures is numeric and that sometimes they've done things and it reads it as a different type of data. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. True, true. But let's yeah. get to that later. Yeah. Um, okay. So we have the loop. We have means. So how modular is it now? So what benefit have we achieved so far? Um, I think so far we have uh, split the whole block of code into three uh, single yeah. purpose functions. Mm -hmm. uh, all of them could be reused. Yeah. Uh, you can, uh, well, if it's a Python script, then you can import them to uh, a different mm -hmm. Python script or a different mm -hmm. notebook. Um, yeah, that's... Uh, I would say we have improved uh, the code. Yeah. Okay, what should we do now? Should we make it a Python script or is there anything else? Um, yeah, I would like to make a Python script when I 
uh, come to this point of coding. Uh, I have done some interactive work. I have seen some uh, visualization of data. Uh, a Python script will make it more convenient to do uh, more uh, exploration. Yeah. OK. Uh, uh, how would you uh, make a Jupyter Notebook to a Python script usually? <laughs> Hmm, I haven't done it that many times. I think you can use NB convert or export it, or maybe in the end, I would just copy what I need over since usually whenever I do something, there's like, it's too messy for me to want to do everything. <laughs> yeah, this seems yeah. a bit cleaner. So what do you recommend? Yeah, this one is, uh, this one uh, is not very long, so Maybe we can use the, the a simple way mm -hmm. uh, because Jupyter Notebook has this save and export notebook as uh, executable script uh, mm -hmm. uh, function. Okay. So yeah, we can do this, I think. Okay, I will save it. Okay, temp visual dot pi. Yep. Okay. okay. Okay, let's see. I think it's here. Yes. Yeah, okay. So it looks like Python code. So yeah, how do we start fixing it up? Uh well I re I will remove this uh, redundant stuff from Jupyter Notebook. Mm-hmm. Uh, then maybe we can yeah. simply run it uh, uh, to, to, to see uh, if things uh, okay. go wrong. Good idea. Yeah. So, I yeah. Yeah, I suppose it could work. <laughs> yeah, I mean, probably. Uh, so that's... maybe this is the first time, well, we've seen examples of command line usage before, but can you explain what it means to be running it on the command line now? Uh, well, it means you will use Python. Mm -hmm. uh, you will use Python and uh, specify the name of the Py file, which mm -hmm. is a script. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Then uh, the Python interpreter will, uh, will run the program. Yeah, okay, so we yeah, give it the program name. And right yes. now there's no argument, so it just runs it from top yeah, to bottom. Everything, yeah, everything is uh, contained in the uh, script itself. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Okay, the importing will take yeah. time. Okay. Okay, mm -hmm. we are supposed to have, oh uh, uh, yeah. Okay. Ah, it's showing. Okay, so now here the command line program is opening a graphical window. Yeah. Is this what we want? Uh, it depends. If we are working on uh, HPC, uh, we don't want it to show because there's no display. Uh, but if it's locally, I don't quite mind to see it show. Yeah. Should we make it where... Oh, this is what we said before, right? So if it, maybe we could say, if you give it a file name, it saves the file name. If you don't yes. give it a file name, then it shows it with plot.show. Yes. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah, I think okay. if we don't want it to be shown, then we uh, probably want to save it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that would be around line 10 we adjust. Yes, uh, so we oh. can comment uh, out this line, mm -hmm. uh, then it won't be shown, okay. but uh, instead we would like to input an uh, output file name, mm -hmm. then it will be uh, saved. Should we say under the if out file, then else, and then do plot.show if there's nothing? Oh yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, 
I see. Okay. So is it good that it does two different things depending on the argument? Uh, I guess it's good, I think. Yeah, it's a reasonable compromise for now. It's a pattern people might want. Like if the plotting function was actually re relatively difficult, then maybe this would be a good way to use it two different ways. Yeah. Okay, so if you run it now, does it show anything graphically? I. Uh, yeah, because we uh, we didn't input any output file, so it uh, uh, it goes to the else uh, branch. Right. Okay. So we need to give it the output file again. Okay. Uh, then we need to modify the script. <laughs> yeah. Is that so, something you want to do? Yeah. Should we give it a way to specify? Should we hard code the output file or should we make it a full script with arguments now? Well, I'd like the argument idea. Okay. I yeah. don't want to touch the script uh, that much. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Good idea. And someone here suggests disconnecting the loop. So maybe we can do this at the same time. So before the script would run it for all these measurements, now the number of measurements should be an argument. Yes. Okay. So do we make a main function here, is it? Uh, yes. Okay. Let's make a main function that can take a number of measurements as an input. Uh -huh. Okay, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, what other so... inputs should we give it? Uh, info, okay. I would say. Yeah. Uh, the output file. Output file. Are those the three main things, I guess? Yeah, Probably. I think so. Yeah. Output, out file, uh, yeah. Okay. So whenever you make a command line program, what do you use for parsing the arguments? Uh, there are several different uh, tools. They are pretty much similar. Uh, like an arg parse or click. Mm -hmm. uh, well, yeah. the example solution says using click, so maybe we should do that. Okay, I, I think it's can't more... remember all the commands, but... Okay. Well, I'm <laughs> reading here, so I can tell you. <laughs> so, okay, above def equals main, then at sign click dot command with parentheses. Uh, I remember it's a uh, click, click option. Dot option, yeah. And then dash dash the measurements. Uh, does the order matter? Should we oh. specify in file firstly? Or oh, maybe we then... could do in file first. Yeah. Okay. I often do that also. So sort of go the input arguments first, then the analysis ones than the output ones, but it parses it in any order. Uh, yes. So uh, it's required, I guess. Uh, uh, there's a good point here. Is an in file an argument and not an option? So it should be an argument. So, okay, maybe we can say what's the difference here. So option is usually something with the two dashes on it and is optional. But positional arguments don't need the dashed things and you are just taking the first one on the command line is the first one and second one is second one. But our example we're following is, has everything as option. So maybe we should follow the example rather than make things ourselves. Okay. <laughs> But we should specify it's required, right? Uh, yes. Uh, there's no default, but uh, oh, definitely okay. some help. Yeah, okay. So it's the input file name. Yes. So 
A second one is number of measurements. Uh, I think the convention is dash instead of underscore. Uh, this is also required and uh, it must be a uh, int. Yes, okay. And also when so, you specify the type like this, it will automatically convert it to that type. Yes. And give a warning if it's not. So help. Uh, that would be the number of uh, matter. to to use uh, then another one will be the output um. uh, this is not required uh, okay yeah in the example, it says it's required, but I guess we can leave it as not required and it will show it on the screen, which is possibly nice. Yes. So not required, right? Yeah, not required. Okay. Output file name. Okay. Okay. Uh, Let's see. Yeah, but uh, in the fun in the main function, we uh, we didn't reflect anything about the output file. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we should add that to plot temperatures, I guess. Yes. Is it the last argument? Yes, I think so. Yes. Uh, yeah. Okay. It's the last none, argument. But default. So it should be like this, I guess. Yes, okay. Uh, do you think it will work? Uh, we need uh, the specify the namespace. Uh, uh, yeah, it has to actually this. run main. Yeah. So what you're about to see is the typical pattern you see at the bottom of Python files. So this means if it's imported, then it just imports it and all the functions can be used. But if it's run as a script from a command line, then name is equal to this main value here. And then it should run the function. So, and this is just basically the pattern you use all the time. So let's see, does it work? I think I forgot to import. Ah, <laughs> oh, yes, we have to import click. Yes. And I'll guess you have it installed from the code refinery. Oh, yeah. I haven't uh, activated the environment. Uh, I should, uh, okay. I guess everyone has uh, inst uh, has uh, created this uh, kind of environment for the mm -hmm. workshop. I also created it myself. Activate. Yeah. Um, yeah, but it worked before. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, it should be better now. Yeah. So, so run. What if we, we run without arguments? Uh, let's Can we see. see a help text or something? Yeah, missing yeah. option. Yeah. Okay. So it basically will guide us through everything that's needed. Mm. Yeah, so. but it, let's check out this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, uh, oh, my fault. Oh, uh, we need Python on it. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we can see this uh, uh, this help message uh, reflects what we uh, specified by using click. Yeah. Okay. So let's see. Can we 
then run it with all the options. Uh, let's see. Uh, we give it a input file, which is uh, temperatures dot csv. If yes. I remember that correctly. Oh uh, yeah, I think so. Number of measurements uh, that will be let's say twenty five. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's try without output file. Yeah. Okay. Okay. It's supposed to show. Yes. yes. Okay. <laughs> and if we change the number of measurements, does it do more? Uh, let's see. Great. That mm. looks correct. Yes. Okay. Good. Okay. Um. And if we give an out file, does it save it to somewhere? Uh, let's have a look. Out. Uh, let me see. Just an example. Dot png. Let's see. It won't show. I think. Yeah. Uh, okay. Let's see if it's saved. Okay, it's saved here. Uh, yeah. Maybe I can open it. Okay. Yeah, and it's there. Okay. Yeah, that look. Yeah. Good. Should we summarize and then go to the break, and then we can do a little bit more when we come back? Uh, yeah, I think it's a good point to yeah. break. Okay. So what did we just accomplish and what's the benefit of what we've done? Also, people can comment in the notes about what you think. So there's a lot more code, but also to do different analyses, we don't have to edit the code at all. The code is basically just that. And if we save these command line lines we run, then we can reproduce our analysis in different ways. Um, if we want to run this automatically, for example, with what we learned for Snakemake on Tuesday, we could uh, like easily plug this into a Snakemake workflow that does things. We can script it to run many, many times on the cluster. We can send it yes. to someone else and they can. we can tell them use these options and they don't have to understand the code. They only have to understand the help text here. So by making this like it more modular, do we call this modular? Yeah, I would definitely call this modular. It could be reused. It could be uh, reproduced. Yeah. Uh, it can be uh, easily scaled up. Yeah. So it's modular. Yeah. And the outsider using it has this clear defined interface for it. So I guess let's take a break. Please keep suggesting what to do next. I can think of a few things like adding the test to it. And we can see what we do then. So there will be uh, like maybe 15 or 20 more minutes of working on this. And then we'll have a quick wrap up of the whole workshop. Okay. okay. Uh, when should we come back? Uh, I guess four past the hour. Okay. Okay. So Great. 10 minutes break. Okay. Thank you. Okay. See you soon. Bye. Thank you. See you soon. Bye. Hello. We're back. So the Hello. last half an hour. Um, in the notes, we had votes for, the most votes were for adding tests. So we're thinking of doing that next. And that really does seem to be about the right time to do it. Um, yes. But before you do that, would you like to make it a Git repository? So we have some record before we start changing a lot of stuff and risk breaking. Uh, yes. It. Uh, okay. Yes, when it comes to this point, when you have a script like this, uh, we would like to do some check. Uh, you have learned uh, in uh, last week 
So uh, I guess we all have Git installed. So and uh, yeah, hopefully so will... with you now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, so it's not yet a Git repo. So I will initial it, initialize it. So Git init. Uh, I usually will specify the branch name. Mm -hmm. So okay, now it's initialized. Um, the so we yeah. can check out uh, uh, with uh, the most yeah. commonly used uh, command git status. Mm -hmm. uh, so we can see all the files uh, unchecked. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but we don't want to check all of them. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I will check uh, the code, of course. Uh, so git add uh, temp. Yes. Uh, okay. It's froze. So, okay. 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 That one has been added. Uh, do we want to add the notebook? Um, maybe. Yeah. Well, yeah. Why not? I mean, I guess maybe it's being replaced now, but for a development project, we may as well keep track of it and we can do something different with it later if it was ever needed. Yes. Okay. So I won't track the plot. Uh, yeah, because they, you, you probably will have uh, plenty of them. Yeah. Maybe at some point uh, I track the most important ones, it, that depends. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. But the idea is to show how we use Git for uh, the version control. Mm -hmm. So I will uh, com commit the... Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So this is... Uh, well, usually I will... Uh, it's the uh, initial commit. Or you can use some uh, some other meaningful uh, commit message. Mm -hmm. Okay, now we have uh, checked uh, the files we want to check. So that's uh, uh, version control you have yeah. learned uh, in last week. Yeah. Okay. So what else we can try? Do. Um, should we add a git ignore for the things we don't oh, want? Yes, yes, that's a good idea. Uh, yeah. If you list, uh, if you list the the hidden files, you will see yeah. there's a dot git. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, typically, we will add uh, a git ignore file. Uh, it's also a hidden file, git ignore. Mm -hmm. Yep. And we add in all the stuff we don't want, like should we add asterisk.png? Yes. Uh, and uh, what else? Things like the pi cache and yes. the ipy nb cache. Yes, pi cache. Is that correct? And the dot i pi. Uh, what's the um, hmm. i pi n b cache or let's <laughs> I forgot it, but uh, let's uh, um, let's check it. Uh, it's uh, i pi n b checkpoints. Checkpoints. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So i pi. Points. Okay. Uh, with this git ignore, uh, if we run git status, status. again, uh, uh, yeah, git ignore, git ignore itself. <laughs> but I guess we'll add git ignore. 
Uh, yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, how about the data? Yeah, should this data be included? Uh, since it's open data, not something uh, sensitive, and it's a small data we use as an ex example. So yeah. I would uh, say it's uh, yeah, it's would, fine to it would add be it. good data for our tests, basically. Yeah, yeah. Okay, sounds good. So let's add it. Yeah. Okay. Now, now uh, everything uh, should be there. Uh, yes, yes, but okay. uh, we need to. Uh, make another commit. Yep. Uh, let's see. Add the uh, um, test data. Okay. Okay. Now it should be clean. Yes. Yes. Okay. Great. Okay. Okay. Uh, but now tests. So um, which of these three functions would you like to test? Or which do we test things that aren't in a function? Uh, I would test a function. Like, uh, well, if the first uh, uh, function I want to test is get mean. Mm -hmm. I don't want the calculation uh, wrong. Yeah. Yeah, and that seems like the most likely to go wrong without us noticing it. So, mm -hmm. okay, should we add the test to this file or another file? Uh, if there's only one test uh, and the file uh, is not very long, I will add it here. Uh, otherwise, I will use a separate file for uh, multiple tests. Yeah. So should we use a separate one? Yeah, I mean, whenever I start with one really small thing like this, I'll also often start just inside of the, um, like. Yeah, just uh, in, uh, inside because. Yeah, yeah. It's small it's, enough. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Then I will. Uh, Ah, uh, we need to import pet test. Yes. Okay. Yes. So test mean. Uh, so mean will be something calculated by using this function. Yeah. Okay. So we basically run we'll, the function. Yeah. Maybe just a. Uh, a list of, uh, of floats. Ah, yeah, that's a good idea. So we basically give it some of our very own data. Yes. And we know what the mean should be, so we can see what it is. And this is sort of the best possible case. So we write in some values. Okay. Maybe another one. Yeah. And then we could do, oh yeah, there. And then for PyTest, we would write assert mean equals mm. three, um, I guess, 3.0. Yes. Okay. And mm. then to run it, how do we do this? Uh, we use uh, PyTest. Mm -hmm. So PyTest. Test. And since and this file it. isn't named test, we need to give it the file name. So temp uh, visual. Visual, yes. Yeah. Let's see. Okay, importing syntax error. Ah, okay. uh, yeah. Is it saved? Uh, Dev land twenty. What's maybe, maybe it needs to be this? saved. Okay. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's okay. Something Jupyter Notebook yeah. doesn't do for you. <laughs> okay. Sometimes. Yeah. So now it says there was one test collected, so we know it actually found it. If it said zero test collected, we'd be a bit worried, and it worked. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, and this time time it happened to work, and there wasn't any floating point error, which caused it to 
make problems. So that is good. If there was this floating point error, it would say error 3.0 is not equal to 3.0000 something. Uh, um, pet test has this uh, a proxy uh, method. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to uh, avoid this kind of uh, accuracy problem, yeah. maybe uh, we can use that. Ah, oh, good idea. Like mm -hmm. this. Yeah, good to demo anyway. Uh, let's see. Uh, is I, I'm sure this will work. Yeah. Because it's less strict than before. <laughs> okay. okay. Yes. Okay. What it good. should. Um, yeah. Do we want to test some other things? Like, should we test if it works with negative numbers? Would we test if it worked with no inputs at all? Would we test that it works with one input? Or maybe this is a good stopping point. What do you uh, think? Yeah, there is uh, something else we can test. Uh, uh, but we're also almost out of time, so oh Maybe yes, we can talk about how we would test the other things. So how would yeah. we test the get data function? Uh, get data function, uh, as I mentioned, we can test uh, if the size is correct. And uh, as it's mentioned in the notes that we can test uh, uh, the data type of temperatures. Mm -hmm. We want it to be uh, float. Right. Yeah. But sometimes from from a CSV file, it might be uh, stored as a string. Yeah. 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 That's also and, something we can test. And since we have some test data included, it's easy to run or do test mm -hmm. data or test test data because we just give it this thing we have already. Yes. Um, what about plot temperatures? Is this easy to test? I mean, I guess we can uh, test if it runs and makes a file. Yes, it's if bit... the file exists. Is it worth testing to see if the file is correct or is that um, trying too hard and not That's worth it? not something I usually do, but uh, it's definitely doable. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's valid, depends on. Yeah. Like same for me. So I would usually not test the plot temperatures unless I know I really need it to. I think there are things for testing matplotlib plotting. Mm. Like you would define what you expect it to have and can test it without saving the file. But I would yes. usually try to do all the stuff that needs testing outside of the plot function to make it easy and plot just does the bare minimum. Yes. Okay. Um. Should we move to the outro and wrap up of the workshop so people can keep as um, giving the final, like you can keep asking questions here and we'll keep answering after the uh, outro part. Yeah, or are we there want any... to have a look at the learning outcomes. Oh, yes, yes. Actually. Uh, this one. Let's go yeah, back there. I think we have achieved the most of them. Yeah, so. Uh, we talk some about peer functions, not as much as some instances of the course, but basically when it doesn't have these side effects, then it's easier to test. Um, the second one we didn't talk about too much. Uh, single purpose function we talked about a bit. Yes. Um, we, so split apply combine is a different kind of thing which we haven't talked about. It's another way of well, basically dividing and conquer. Um, the command line interface we did extensively talk about. And to me, that's when the code really starts getting reusable and I start becoming proud of sharing it. It becomes actually like a thing. So yeah. Uh, 
And I think we saw how this connects to the other lessons. So we did the tests, didn't really do documentation. We talked about version control. We talked about how the scripts making the command line interfaces lets us make it more reproducible later on. So, yeah. Yeah, we, we have, uh, there's something we haven't covered, but we can continue the discussion in the notes. Uh, yeah. yeah, and also I see some uh, suggestions uh, regarding the, the code script. Uh, yeah, we, we use it as a demo. It's not uh, perfect, uh, but the idea is uh, modular coding. <laughs> yeah. So. Okay, um, so I'm gonna switch to my screen. Okay. If I can. Um,